God has created us to perform certain functions and have certain gifts, right? But if if we don't have the the fuel, we don't have the right inspiration, we're not going to perform as we're created. Welcome to the Bible in One Year podcast, brought to you by Two Brits and a Bible. Today's day 320, covering Acts 9 and 10. I gave Adam a bit of laugh there just off camera. So my, my wife is pregnant and one of her very generous friends gave us an entire box of cookies. And I know this is going to be blurred out on the video, which is annoying because it's just focused on me. There's nothing naughty about these cookies other than <laughs> thousand calories or something. But they're just sat on my desk because with her uh, pregnancy, uh, she's got a bit of morning sickness and aversion to certain foods. So, so there you go. Here's, here's some, a big pack of premium cookies. And I, so tempted to eat a few but i don't want to do that on air so i just have to wait we'll and great you... pregnancy announcement to our followers by the way yeah there you go i'm gonna have a uh, little boy or girl we don't know yet we'll have to do a, an over-the-top gender reveal on this channel i'll just have like blue or pink cannons behind them just like spray everywhere so that'd be pretty yeah. good anyways let's get to the bible enough about my wife and baby and cookies and such um acts 9 verse 8 Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. So this is the famous road to Damascus. This is where Saul becomes Paul, which I ruined yesterday. So I apologize. No spoilers here. Uh, but much like Ananias and Sapphira, God is not messing around here, right? He needs the right people in the right places to establish this early foundational church. And he's picked Saul and he knows Saul's got the right stuff. The other big thing is, uh, same guy I mentioned before that said about Ananias and Sapphira, he explained that like Holy Spirit is like putting batteries in a toy. So God, God has created us to perform certain functions and have certain gifts, right? But if if we don't have the the fuel, we don't have the right inspiration. We're not gonna perform as we're created. So if you put batteries in a toy, the toy works properly. When you put Holy Spirit in a man or woman then that's when they start performing properly. And that's what happened with Saul. He didn't have his batteries in, so he was malfunctioning. He was using his powers for bad. Holy Spirit comes in, starts using his powers for good. And that's good, mate. I like that. I hadn't heard that analogy before. It's cool. Love that. I feel like it's not a perfect analogy, but I'll, it makes enough of a correct point that I like it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <coughs> There's the COVID. Yeah. Um, and so within that same point, Paul has such a similar experience to Stephen, where Stephen had basically been a disciple of God, of Jesus for so long. But it was when he was first appointed into a role, he instantly started <clears throat> uh, fulfilling it. Yeah. But Paul, it was like he didn't need to wait because he was an inexperienced Christian. He's like, I know the power of God in my life and I will sort of speak openly about it like it doesn't matter what your past is doesn't matter how long you've been a christian or how long you've been in your job or whatever it is just again do what god is calling you to do absolutely i was gonna have one more quick thing that just came up from what you just said to me it's interesting that saul also the way that god speaks to him is taking away his sight right it reminds me of like you know amazing grace i once was blind but now i see that sort of thing yeah. it's almost like god is being like look so like you have no vision of who I am. And so I'm literally just going to remove your vision for a bit. And then when you open your eyes again, you'll actually be able to see properly for the first time. Yeah. So it's like rebirth. It's kind of interesting in that as well, because it's the whole three days thing. And that's the length of time that Jesus was in the grave. So it's kind of like the disciples were blind for the three days that they didn't know what was going on. And so it was blind. I don't know, man. There's a lot yeah. of stuff in there. So. That's really cool. That's really cool. Um, one of the unsung heroes of the Bible, in my opinion, is this lad Ananias, because this is a different Ananias to the one who helped yeah, that was struck dead. Um, yeah. But Ananias is a bloke that God is like, hey, listen, Ananias, um, you need to go to Damascus because there's a guy there called uh, what is it, Saul of Tarth, a man from Tarsus named Saul. Yeah, He's praying and he needs you to go and lay hands on him and <laughs> Ananias is like oh god I've heard a lot of reports about this man um, and all the harm he's done to your people in Jerusalem and hasn't he come here with the authority to arrest all the people that call on your name that's verse 14 uh, chapter 9 verse 14 and then God's just like yeah yeah but 
he's my chosen instrument so off you go and so and ananias just goes finds this house places his hands on saul and he gets healed like yeah you know that this guy is coming to arrest and kill you and god's like yeah off you go and you're like all right um just (laughs) that's good man that's good that's a really good point and i didn't even think about that but you're exactly right yeah that's so cool that's really cool um okay quick one uh from the end of Acts 9, uh, verse 34. Um, Aeneas, Peter said to him, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and roll up your mat. Immediately Aeneas got up. So again, it's just this parallel of what Jesus did while he was here and now what the disciples are doing, right? It reminds us of the story of Jesus, like healing the crippled man and then saying, pick up your mat and go. It's the same sort of thing, right? And I just, I, I love the parallels. For sure. Uh, what, and not to be confused with Ananias or Ananias, of course. Yes, of course, right, exactly. Surely that's another sign that the Bible isn't made up. Like they would, they, someone would have thought, ah, that's too similar. Let's change this fella's name. No, no, yeah. it's real because of the annoying names. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. If anyone tells you the Bible isn't real, just say, well, what about all the annoying names, huh? Exactly. Cool. And immediately, immediately become a Christian. And then, um, yeah. So then into Acts 10, Acts 10, verse 5, Cornelius calls for Peter, a man in Caesarea called Cornelius. He was a centurion. Um, and he God tells him who he's looking for. And he says, send a man to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He's staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. Like God getting pretty specific there with... <laughs> Oh, Caesarea. Again, Simon staying with another Simon. Like, oh, come on, just pick a different name, Mr. Yeah. Mike author. Just kidding. Can't, that was can't someone be called uh, Barnabas again or something? Yeah, pretty much. Anyway. Um, but yeah, love how specific it is. But then actually, when you read through the rest of that story, you realize that Peter's being called pretty much for the first time to go and speak to the Gentiles. And he has this incredible vision in which God is like, don't call anything impure that I have made clean. And then the similarities between eating impure foods and like having the Holy Spirit poured out among the Gentiles, which is from 10 verses 11 and then 28. Yeah. But in order for Peter to have the faith to go and do that, it almost needed that level of specificity to be able to say, like, no, pretty sure this isn't a coincidence. All right. right, Off I go. I love that. And I, I love that that links to what I've said for Acts, Acts 10, verse 13. It's like God working on Peter as well, right? So this famously is where Peter is told to kill and eat unkosher food, right? Because he's, yeah. he needs sustenance. And I found it a bit difficult at first because, you know, keeping kosher was a sign of your obedience to God in the Old Testament. I spoke to Josh about it for a bit, actually. He was saying, you know, obviously that we're no longer held to the Old Covenant um and it may be links also to when jesus says about how it's what comes out of a man that defiles him not what goes into him but even more importantly linking to acts 10 28 which you just mentioned this also maybe helps peter to have that bias that is bred into them at that time culturally against gentiles be removed because he literally says that god has shown him that he shouldn't call anyone impure or unclean so you know Peter maybe had some prejudice still. Like, oh, look at those dirty Gentiles eating their pork and shrimp and whatever, right? Mm. And now God is working on him being like, look, I don't care about that stuff. Like, new covenant, eat, eat your pork and your prawns if you want and get on with it. All right, lad? Yeah, mate, that's good. I like that. Sweet. I hadn't seen it from that side before, so that's cool. Uh, my last point, because just got to get out of the way, then you can take over the rest, was just a, a little bit, bit of a Bible in one verse, which is 10 verse 34, 35. God does not show favoritism, but accepts those from every nation who fear him and do what is right. Love that. That's awesome. Um, so then Acts 10, 26, just quickly. This guy that Peter is helping kneels down to worship Peter. And Peter says, look, I'm only a man myself, right? So again, this just shows how desperate people are to find something higher than themselves to worship or idolize, right? There is this void that's built into us that if we don't fill it correctly with Jesus, we're going to fill it with something terrible. And that's obviously a huge portion of what happens in the Bible. So I think that's all we've got time for today, eh, mate? Yeah, afraid so, everybody. Tomorrow we'll be on Acts 11 and 12. So why don't you beautiful people pick up your Bibles and get reading? In the meantime, please consider joining us on social media at Two Books in the Bible and sharing this with someone to help spread the word of God. 